Welcome to the second part of our feature on Holliston's Community Gardens. This morning we're here at the Holliston Community Farm, which is located off Lowland Street. Uh, and we're going to be talking to the members of the Community Farm Board Advisory Committee. Welcome to Shannon and Chris. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, uh, let's start with the farm itself. Can you give me a little history of how it, how it came about and what's its mission? The town voted to purchase this property in 2014, and I think 2015 we purchased it. Um, it's about 30 acres of land, partial agriculture, partial open space. Um, we, we were formed as a committee in 2016, I believe, the beginning, or 2017. We've been doing this a while. Um, <laughs> to oversee the property and, and come up with a request for a proposal to see if a farmer would come take it. At the time that we were formed, the property was a mess. There was a lot of garbage and it needed work. Um, we uh, actually, the uh, committee, along with the friends of the community farm, um, initially put 10 garden plots over closer to the house. Um, we had a survey done, we had to move it, so we relocated here where we have more real estate. And uh, so we've expanded since then. It's a public property, so mm -hmm. people can come walk. We have some trails. We have the Boy Scouts that did some Eagle Scout projects that cleared some trails, existing trails around the property and uh, put in a kiosk. So we're working with them to, to map it out. So you can come here and, and take a stroll. Oh, that's um, great. I didn't realize that. That's a nice, that's very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've had the Girl Scouts come and mm -hmm. put pollinator hotels along the way. And, uh -huh. um, yeah, we're just trying to maintain it and we have a farmer using part of the field. We try to use, we try to keep the field, uh, we're trying to get the soil better. So we've had manure from Willow Rise Farm oh, good. spread yeah. in the farm and, and we've planted cover crops. Um, but most of the field is not used right now, mm -hmm. um, uh, except for the section farmed. What else? Uh, You've got this big greenhouse. This is impressive. The American Legion Downtown Marigold Project donated that greenhouse in 2018, maybe. So the money from the Downtown Marigold Project helped to build this greenhouse. Right, and and uh, we want to. He wants to be starting plants in there, the Downtown Marigold Project. Sure. So they want to use it as an expansion greenhouse for their operations. Mm -hmm. So we've uh, we've also um, we're working on getting a heater going in there so we can do early starts of the plants. Yep. Um, That's a great partnership then. It is. That's it a, is. Yeah. We have a lot of good partnerships. The Lions Club has worked with us. The, Newcomers Club, we've sided the barn with um, some donations and help from, you know, other groups in town. Um, yeah. That's great. So there's a lot going on here. Um, what are the plans for um, this winter or this fall? The last time I was here was on New Year's Eve at the bonfire. <laughs> was that was a lot of fun. Right. Great. Quite opposite weather, too. Right? Yes. Yes. I know. <laughs> Pretty hot today. <laughs> yes. um, in the fall, we run the Haunted Walk. Okay. So it, it didn't run for a few years because of Triple E. Um, wow. And then because of COVID, mm -hmm. so we finally had our first one in a long time, uh, and it was uh, a little off the date. So you know, but we still wanted to have it. So we're going to do that uh, the end of October. We're, we need to select our date and put it out there, um, and then we need to have the heater for the bonfire to to use the greenhouse. Uh, sure. so we're working on that. Um, uh, other events are. I mean, we. The garden plots keep us busy. Uh, the greenhouse keeps us busy to, to maintain it. Um, yeah. We don't yeah. really have any other events. Um, in the spring, we have a seedling sale. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how many plots do we have here? There are 25 plots. I think mm -hmm. we were at 15. Mm -hmm. And last year, we expanded 10 more. So the 10 closest to us are, are new as of last year. And they they filled up very quickly. And there's a lot of folks here gardening. How, how can, if I want to plot, what do I do? On the town website, there mm -hmm. is a link to apply for a plot. Mm -hmm. It looks like you're fully subscribed this year, right? Yeah. We are. We, we have been. Yeah. <laughs> we just had a few new people this year. Uh -huh. Does it cost anything? Yes. Okay. How much? Uh, this year's cost $50. Uh -huh. so we might look at a small increase for next year. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. But it includes the water and, um, we did have a, a like a group uh, garden plot cleanup. For, for the most part, we maintain everything in here. So yeah, we being the volunteers, the, the five-member 
Huddleston Community Farm Advisory Committee oh, wow. right now. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. looking for new members too. I mean, it's supposed to be a seven member board, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll yeah. put that Anybody out there. Anybody else wants to join yeah. us, we're, we're good to work with. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's beautiful too. You're doing something yeah. great. So, um, so the water, do you, um, do you pay for the water? How does that work? Right or? now we're connected to town water and yes, we pay for it. Yep. Uh, and so that's part of the rent, hopefully kind of recovers some of that, but mm -hmm. not all of it. Um, okay. uh, so yeah, that's, that's what we do. We did have a well put in. We need the electrical to get connected. Oh. So yeah, an irrigation well. Wow. So we were trying to kind of get off of the reliance on the town right. water. Yep. Yeah, well, once you have that, there's a lot of opportunities, I would think, if you have a well here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there should be. Yeah. 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 I'm also trying to find some solar grants or mm -hmm. whatever. The, the problem with grants for this is not an operational farm, so you can't do like okay. the regular farm grants where you have to show a business income. So yep. we're just looking for if, you know, opportunities to become more sustainable you know, at an economical <laughs> price. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, so. what about organic processes? What, what happens here? Um, do you require organic fertilizer or what, you know? Uh, pretty much, yeah. We're not yeah. certified organic, but right. we no. ask that you don't use anything toxic in the garden plots, just natural fertilizers, mm -hmm. natural treatment of pests. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, how do you control the varmints? What, what's, what, what's going on here with the fencing? And <laughs> this is one nice thing about having a plot here is that it's somewhat, you know, fenced in and protected. Obviously we're out in nature and things can get through the fence. So we try our best to keep them out. Yep. It doesn't always happen, but we do try our best. Mm -hmm. But at least the deer probably keep out of yes. this. Yeah, yeah, the deer are that's, out. But... That's the big part. Yeah. Um, we try to keep the, you know, sometimes the squirrels climb the fence. We've had some bunny problems this year. Um, yeah, and mm. the woodchucks did sneak in here, but we <laughs> took care of them with some live animal traps and have a heart traps. Um, so yeah, we're, we, uh, we don't do anything, you know, mean or toxic or yeah. whatever <laughs> here. We, we no. try to be, you know, yeah. environmentally kind, you know, kind yes. and yes. safe. Yes. 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 So it looks, well, who, what kind, who gardens here? Uh, would you have a spectrum of ages? I mean, what kind of people ha are come over here? There's a, a bit of everybody. I yeah. think everybody, especially since the pandemic and seeing what can happen to our food security, yeah. um, you see a, a variety of people here who are gardening, trying to grow their own food organically mm -hmm. um, and make the best of it. Yeah, they don't they don't have the space at home or they have a shady yard yeah. or they even want to just do more here. Mm -hmm. um, that's Marty over there gardening. <laughs> and, uh, well, maybe we'll we'll talk yeah, to her. In a little she's while. been yeah. here, I think, since the pandemic. I think this is her second year. Yeah. But a lot of people have been here, like since we were at the other location. Yep. <laughs> so we have a lot of people that return. Return. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Shannon, tell, talk a little bit about why garden? Why, why people garden? Why do you uh, garden? <laughs> <laughs> well, I garden, I mean, I, I grew up like a lot of people being able to go into a grocery store and get what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, once a pandemic hit, it started to scare us, you know, uh, food security wise. So it turned something that I already love to do into a priority I... and providing food for my family and also being able to teach my kids how to grow food because I think that's one of the most empowering things you can teach. That is beautiful. Yeah. And so do you have kids come over here and help? Yeah, my kids are often here. I have yeah. three little ones mm -hmm. that love to run around. They help sometimes. Yeah. They get dirty sometimes. That's good. Actually all the time. <laughs> we have, um, but have a fun. few families here, right? Yeah. They bring their kids. Some people bike over here because yep. it's still accessible within yeah. town. Mm -hmm. Um, we have somebody that loves to grow flowers, right? And they don't yeah. necessarily grow vegetables. Said, I think yeah, they might have another plot. So yeah, we mm -hmm. have um, some beautiful growing going on here. I'm always fascinated by what I see every year. Mm -hmm. Do people share tips or, or seedlings or, you know, do, do, yeah. is it kind of a community There's here too? There's a really n a nice sense of community here and getting to know everybody else and learning from each other is one, another really important yeah. reason to come here. You can learn so much. And I think people who like to garden, they love to learn about it. Mm -hmm. um, so we can share practices, we can share plants, we can share seeds. You know, it's, it's really a, a good sense of community. Like I think, it. yeah, next year, the, there's a woman that gardens here who 
offered to teach some courses too, so we might try to integrate that into next year's season. Mm -hmm. um, she's kind of out for this season, but yeah, we wanted to, to try to do that and start doing more workshops here again now that mm -hmm. I think, you know, the COVID thing is a little, sure. you know, yeah. steady. Yeah, exactly. yeah, not gone, but yeah. yeah. Well, let's take a walk around and see what's here. Sure. I see a red tomato in there. I know, my tomatoes are coming in. Yeah, it's nice. And one of the funny things is, of course, these are wild. Yeah, this is St. John's wort. Right. This oh, is what people make herbal medicine from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's now, what Robert I told me. I haven't myself made the medicine, but I feel like, okay, if this plant wants to live here, perfect. <laughs> no, I mean, it's St. John's wort. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and it's it, it, it just planted it's itself. So, <laughs> anyway, this is my second year in this plot. And um, I love it, you know, because I don't have to worry about... Um, you know critters too much you know yeah. and stuff like that and it's protected and uh, and you meet other gardeners so it's a good thing that's it that's great yeah yeah. It's a, yeah so it's a good year for tomatoes I can see too. tomatoes mm -hmm. like it up here yeah you know there's a lot of Sun mm hmm yeah yeah yep yeah. and, um, and so do you come here every day or what do you well it depends on the weather mm hmm I mean if if, if it's been a rainy spell. I don't have to come up every day, but if it's hot, like you know, I am. Um, yeah, I got to come up and check it. Yeah. Even th even though I've mulched it and everything like that, I, you know, and I don't live too far away, so it's yeah. fine. And I, one of my friends has has uh, that plot, and she's away on vacation, so I'm checking her plot too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that Garden goes. neighbors. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You yeah. Go. And you can al you always have to weed, so. Yeah, and mostly. You got some good weeds yeah. in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the mulch helps, but. Mm. Yeah. So how long have you been gardening, like as a person? A long time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, probably since I was a, a kid with my dad, you know, and just had little things. But yeah. you know, mostly my whole life, really. Gardening is a good thing. It is a good thing. Even if it doesn't really, you know, you don't eat from it or you don't, you know, even if it fails, that's not really what it's about for me. It's mm -hmm. more like being out here in the air and, you know, and um, being around plants and it's yeah. peaceful and it's... It, and it's healthy, so. Yeah. But then, of course, I'm going to get great tomatoes this year, so that's that's good. You yeah. are. That's They're a bonus. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe some strawberries, although they look a little a little yeah. seasick right now, so we'll have mm. to see how that goes. But. <laughs> so this is one of my plots. I have two, um, and here I have tomatoes, um, some cucumbers, and a lot of flowers. Um, obviously, we're not eating the flowers, but they bring so much joy. I, I grew just a few last year, and I found it so rewarding to go home with a little cup full of flowers to put on the table um, and my daughter loves to come pick them and bring them home and give them away so oh. <laughs> um, in this plot I focused more on the flowers um, but they are also good pollinating uh, for pollinators yeah. too yeah and uh, another really great benefit of gardening here is that we have the bee apiary so there's no lack of pollinators here to help us garden and this the flowers definitely attract them here which the cucumbers will definitely benefit from. Yeah, I can see some bees on the flowers right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's lovely. Nice of bees. Yeah. yeah. So, what kind of tomatoes are those? I chose. Um, I try to choose vegetables that don't need me to maintain them every day. Maybe so. These are big slicer tomatoes. Um, I don't remember what I have in here. I think Aunt Ruby's. I like to grow off varieties that um, are heirloom and kind of different. So. Um, there's one called Black Pineapple, Aunt Ruby's, and I think a Dr. Witchy's, which is Ooh. a big orange one. It's really good for <laughs> tomato sandwiches. Yum. Yeah. Great. And that's a lot of zinnias. Zinnias are a classic, I think, garden flower. Yep. yep. Uh, a lot yep. of nice cut flowers. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. So here's, tell me about this feature that we're talking over here. Um, so. I had this idea because I know people that are in wheelchairs that live in town and we were trying to come up with something accessible here at the farm because we we had the parking lot done. It's, it, you know, it's not the greatest for wheelchairs, but um, Owen Balmer is an Eagle Scout and he did this for us. He built this for us this year. We're going to relocate it. It's not going to be, re it doesn't look very accessible right now, but it's for somebody in a wheelchair or somebody that, you know, doesn't want to kneel for a garden plot. So it's an experimental feature and we're going to see if somebody would like to use it and you know enjoy gardening up here so just to get outside is very uh, therapeutic. I'm sure you're going to find a lot of people that will want this. This is an excellent idea. Wow. 
Yeah. yeah. Anybody with mobility problems would just love to have a garden like that. I think I'd like to be. <laughs> I know, I'm getting <laughs> there to too. Be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great yeah. idea, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. From Holliston Community Farm, for Heartbeat of Holliston, this is Chris O'Lawless.